Uh, good morning and welcome to the seventh meeting in 2016 of the SPPA committee. Can I remind everyone to um, switch mobile phones and other devices to silent as they may interfere with the broadcasting. First meeting on our agenda this morning is cross-party groups uh, and as such we will take um, evidence from Gillian Martin MSP in a proposed CPG in Women in Enterprise and then from Jamie Green, MSP and proposed CPG on LB LGBTI+. I would like to welcome Gillian Martin to the committee this morning and invite the member to make an opening statement about the proposed group. Thank you very much, convener. Um, the Women in Enterprise cross-party group is, aims to establish a forum for the sharing of experiences and information on the position of women in enterprise in Scotland. We want to enable discussion and debate on the gender gap in enterprise and seek solutions on how this might be tackled and bring partners together with an interest in women in enterprise to develop a collaborative approach towards working together. Um, developing women in enterprise is acknowledged as critically important for Scotland's economy. Um, there's currently a, a gap in the amount of women setting up business compared to men, and the, the actual economic um, uh, effect of that is that if we had the same amount of women setting up in business as we do at the same rate as we do their male counterparts, there would be an increase of about seven billion going into the Scottish economy. So we want to establish a group to recognise that, but also to look at ways of tackling it and for it to be a forum for women um, thinking about setting up in business, women who have been successful in business to encourage others and to, to provide uh, a forum for them to do that. Okay, thank you very much. Can I invite any questions from members this morning? Mr. Thank you. Thank you, convener. I, I believe there is a really strong case for uh, this group. I think you know it, it, it's quite cross-cutting, uh, and you'll be able to then draw on other groups to then bring some advice and support to that. But your, your main aim is to try and in, inform and, and, and just generate awareness, uh, but also try to uh, install individuals and then women who want to then take part in that whole process. Is that the real purpose behind it? Well, th this CPG kind of has its, its foot in quite a few camps, really. It has its foot in skills, uh, the economy, um, I suppose there's the qualities issues as well, but mainly it is an, an economic and skills uh, agenda. Um, we are, and also it sort of cuts into education as well. We we're, we're, uh, took evidence in our first meeting that um, we have a, a situation where female graduates are not setting up in business to the rate that we'd expect. So that's one of the areas we're going to look at as well and bring attention to. We, we want to be very proactive as well about getting publicity out there about our work so that these are things that, 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 are, that are talked about in the, in the, in the public. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Ms. Okay, yeah. A statement, uh, convener, thank you, then, then a question. I just wanted to clear that I'm a member of uh, this uh, cross-party group and to thank uh, Gillian Martin for bringing uh, this cross-party group uh, to our attention. Thank you. Can I ask um, if you considered whether um, the, the objectives could have been met by existing CPGs and wh why you feel that there's a necessary for a new one specifically with a focus on women? Yeah. Um, looking at the CPGs that currently exist, there's actually not any that I identified that had a, a gender uh, sort of bias, and bias is the wrong word, but um, that, that tackled gender. And of course, in the economy committee that I actually sit on as well, there's actually... Um, there's so much to talk about in the Economy Committee that I, I am bringing gender issues into the Economy Committee, but there really isn't the space to develop this fully. And that was really my driving force behind this, um, is to have something which actually directly focused in on women in enterprise, not even necessarily the pay gap that we're not really talking about. We're talking about women setting up in business, and we wanted to really have, have that focus that we didn't feel that was been met elsewhere. OK, Mr. Scott. Um, I do think this is a very good idea. Uh, I agree with Alexander Stewart's comments. Um, I'm disappointed only to see that there are no Conservatives apparently on that group. Yeah. Uh, have you approached? Yeah, I, I, I actually, I too was very disappointed. I, I was, I was actually disappointed to see that there, there's, there's two parties missing from it. I did actually approach some of the, the female members of, of, of your group, to, um, to, to join the group, but unfortunately. They uh, did not. 
Uh, however, I what I would say is the door is always open. <laughs> Thank you for that reaffirmation of willingness. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thanks, very kind. Thank you. Any further questions from the committee? Uh, yeah, um, Mr. Johnson here. Um, well, first of all, I'd just like to uh, declare that I, I'm a, another of the, 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 the sort of founding members of the group, and I think it's really important that we look at inclusivity and in enterprise and in work. I guess um, my, my one comment, um, I think that is absolutely right to look at, at startups, and I'd, I'd hope that, that women in enterprise is, 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 is sort of broader than just women starting up business. I think w women in leadership roles in, in big business, I think, is also really important and, and in professions and, and hope that, that uh, it's a group that looks at those broad spectrum of gender issues uh, within enterprise and leadership roles across all sorts of organisations in the economy. Yeah, um, we are going to be very strong in bringing in mentoring um, issues, around mentors that already exist who are very successfully running business and actually linking up people who are at the startup phase or maybe just at the small business phase with, with other mentors, other female mentors who have made a success of their business. That's one of the things we want to look at quite directly. Thank you. Everyone, yeah, th thank you very much, Guy. Thank you for your attendance this morning, and we will be considering the CPG item two in our agenda, and you'll be informed of the um, result of that as soon as possible. So, thank you very much for your attendance this morning. Thank you very much, everyone. Can we suspend briefly while the witnesses change over? Good morning and uh, a warm welcome to Jamie Green this morning to the committee um, and we'll be considering a proposed uh, cross-party group on LB, LGBTI plus issues and um, I would like to um, invite the member to make an opening statement about the CPG. Thank you, good morning. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me along here this morning. It's very odd to sit at the side of the, the desk in a room like this. Um, with the uh, US Supreme Court legalising gay marriage in 2015, and Ireland having amended its own constitution that same year, it is clear that unprecedented progress is being made for LGBT rights, thanks to the tireless advocacy of the community. And this is great news. But the last thing we can afford to do is become complacent. It is true that lesbian, gay, bisexual and trans acceptance has soared in Scottish society. Scotland is a very inclusive place, but that alone does not equate to true equality. As a society, we're still too quick to label people and put them in boxes. And despite their contributions to our communities and our country, too many people in the LGBTI community still face issues like bullying, mental health problems, sexual health problems, economic discrimination and domestic violence in their daily lives. Therefore, we owe it, above all, to our young generation to do more and be ever vigilant. There is no time or place to be, to be complacent. Now, the reaction I get from people when I told them I was thinking about setting up this group is remarkably consistent. I can't believe there isn't one already, is the reaction I often get. And to be honest, committee, when I joined this parliament, that was my reaction too. I set up this group with the sole aim of bringing together our political parties, parliamentarians, third party organisations, charities, LGBT groups and individuals who also need a voice. We held our first meeting recently to discuss the aims and ambitions of the group. And I was told afterwards by one charity who attended that meeting that it was actually the first time that many such groups had sat in the same room to share ideas, debate agendas, and discuss a more joined up approach to how we can help this community. And in the day of age, when charity and campaign groups are fighting desperately for self-survival, often the bigger picture is forgotten and the smaller voice is lost. The collective outcome is secondary to the individual agenda. If nothing else, committee, this group will bring together a wealth of experience, an unprecedented mix of views and opinions over the period of this parliament and will seek to inform our lawmakers, influence our decision makers, and lead the debate, not follow it. I ask the committee, therefore, to consider the approval of this group to send a powerful message to the rest of the world that this parliament is not afraid to tackle these often difficult 
and uncomfortable problems head on. I, for one, will play a proud part in this group and along with my fellow co-conveners and other members, hopefully will make the LGBTI community in Scotland proud that we do not just talk, but we act. And that action hopefully starts today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can I invite any questions from members? Um, Mr Johnson? Um, first of all, I think uh, uh, the creation of this group is, is hugely welcome. Um, I think it is ex ex extraordinary that it doesn't exist already. I think one of the key functions of cross-party groups, in a sense, is to sense, sort of, um, uh, I think, kind of bring bring outside groups together and help provide a kind of a, 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 con a consistent voice, or at least bring out the different voice. And I think this is one area where I'm very aware that there are a, a kind of a number of different overlapping communities, albeit with distinct perspectives. I'd just be interested to hear kind of how you sort of see the role of the group in terms of bringing those voices together and, 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 and bringing out the diversity of voices so that, that people in this parliament can, can, can hear those different perspectives. I think that's a very uh, fair question. It's also a very challenging one because you're right, uh, you know, in, the, uh, in my experience in, in the LGBTI community that there are so many different organisations often seeking to uh, achieve the same outcome, uh, and you know, I've over my over my years come across various almost factions within some of those groups themselves, and it can be difficult. And I think the purpose of this group, uh, or one of the benefits of having a group like this, will be the ability to bring people round the table together in an environment that they often wouldn't do so. Uh, as I said uh, in my statement, uh, you know, in a, after the, the first meeting, somebody said to me um, anonymously, you know. I, I was really surprised we've never actually sat around the table together and these are charities often fighting for the same funding or trying to achieve similar outcomes and I really enjoyed that platform, the ability to sit around the same table and, and actually in a, in, a, in a closed environment share ideas and be honest with each other rather than uh, you know, uh, sort of fighting for our own individual agendas. So I think we do have to create a group and it's important that the group uh, gives everyone a, a fair voice and an equal voice. Uh, be they a large, large well-funded organisation or a small individual, small local group. Everyone should have an ability to, to chip in and we're looking at ways in, in, in the work programme uh, agendas to how we do that, how do we make sure that it's, it's not just one or two themes that dominate the discussions over the course of the, the meetings. Uh, there are some very important uh, themes that do have to be discussed, but I, I do also think there are a number of other uh, issues which are uh, new to me. For example, uh, we, we're talking about things like geriatric, geriatric care for older gay people who live on their own or live in care homes, or for people who live in rural communities, uh, you know, what, what facilities are available for them from a, a health or support point of view. Um, so there are lots of other issues which aren't mainstream necessarily that we do have to give a voice to. Um, how we facilitate that, yes, I think it there will be a challenge, but that's the, the purpose of the, the, co the four co-conveners, to make sure that the group is as is, 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 is neutral as it can be. Mr. Stewart, can I, can I commend Mr. Green for bringing this to this uh, committee today? I think this has a real opportunity uh, uh, within uh, uh, the community, the political community, and also uh, the outside community. And I do believe that we have our part to play uh, in this process. And by having this group, that will give us that platform. Now, my question to you would be: How do you plan to promote and publicise uh, and use? Uh, the platform uh, to benefit uh, the communities that you're trying to represent and also to try and bring them closer to the political domain? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I, mean, I think the, f the fact that the group will, be, will meet and be held in the parliament itself is a good start. Uh, it's often, uh, you know, for some, it will be the first time they've had access, direct access to parliamentarians. Um, the fact that we will uh, try and, I think, shadow uh, the work programme along with the legislative agenda of the Scottish Government is quite important. So we will be um, looking at uh, the timelines of when we think bills may be coming through and, and where there are areas in those bills where there is an LGBTI element that we should be thinking about or debating and discussing ourselves. Um, I think, uh, you know, it, it's, it's also an open group as well. You know, I, I, I've, the invitation is there to, to any member of any political party of any uh, gender, any sexual orientation to come in and, be, and participate in that group. And I'm very pleased to say that there's been a lot of interest across the political spectrum and, and people who may not, not necessarily want to be a member of the group or have time to, but they still want me to report back in terms of what's been discussed because it affects health issues or education or equality or 
uh, the economy, there are lots of different areas that I think it will, will touch upon. So um, it, I think it, it just gives people that unique opportunity to come in and, and, and let their voice actually be heard in a, in a public sphere. Uh, in terms of promoting the group, I think it's up to each individual member to do its best, um, to let people know the group is out there. We'll, we'll discuss as a group, I'm sure, uh, how we want to manage that in terms of social media and online presence uh, to, to get, get the word out there. Um, that, that we're, we're, we're here and, and, and we're, you know, anyone is welcome to come and, and be part of that debate. So, Thank you. Hey, Mr. Arthur. Thank you, convener, and good morning. I, too, would like to join other members of the committee in commending and congratulating uh, Jamie Green in bringing this group forward and also um, uh, share uh, my surprise that uh, no such group um, had been in existence. So just a, a very specific point I, I want to pick up on um, in which uh, it references um, in your submission that we have also taken on some of the functions of other groups which no longer exist in S5, such as the Bloodborne Virus Group. I'll declare an interest. I'm in the process along with um, other members, including Deputy Convener, of um, re-establishing that group. And while I think it's a, certainly a very pertinent and important issue to be taken up by um, the LGBTI plus CPG, um, I think we would agree uh, bloodborne viruses and sexual health has goes much further. For example, um, hepatitis C being a, a key example, which is um, uh, well referenced within the Scottish Government's bloodborne virus framework. I just wonder if you would see um, any conflict in these two groups coexisting or conversely an opportunity to work together and cooperate. Yeah. Um, when I submitted the original uh, uh, proposal, the information I had at the time was that that group wasn't able to get off the ground and they were looking for other means of, of promoting that, that particular cause. Uh, th I heard yesterday, actually, uh, luckily before I came here today, that, that that group is looking to re-establish itself, and I'm very pleased about that. I think you're right, that that uh, that is an, that has a wider agenda uh, that isn't just specific to the LGBTI community. Um, there's a lot of work to be done there in that group. I don't think there's any conflict of interest. I think, if anything, we can help each other. I'd like to think that when we're having a meeting uh, which is dedicated to that subject matter that people from your group can come along and, 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 and be involved in that debate. And equally, where you, part of your work programme in that potential group, uh, is covering the LGBTI community, that someone from our group could come and join that too. I, I don't see any particular restrictions on crossover there. Um, I think we should probably share some uh, information on our plans and what we're both trying to achieve in that subject area to make sure there isn't any duplication. Um, but, but where possible, I'd like to think we can help each other. I would um, just finally emphasise that um, uh, as someone who has a cross-party group that has had joint meetings on several occasions with different groups, you know, we don't all live in isolations and we encourage members to look to opportunities for joint um, committee meetings within the CPGs um, going forward. Um, we will be taking the decision on this and it's Everyone content with that? Taking the decision at agenda item two today and you'll be informed of our decision in due course. So thank you very much for your attendance this morning and we'll just suspend shortly to allow Mr Green to, to leave the thank committee. Thank you. Move to uh, agenda item two, which is consideration of the cross-party groups. Um, and if I could take initially the CPG on women in enterprise and event, invite any comments from the members? Yeah, Mr Stewart? I, th I, th I think it, it, it crosses across many sectors, uh, 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 as was indicated by the, the member who gave evidence today. Uh, and I think that there is a real opportunity for us to uh, engage uh, with uh, the sector and to do all we can to promote and publicise it. Uh, and I really do think that it's, it would be a great asset to have it here. Uh, and uh, I think the people who are on it are also quite innovative of themselves. And I think that will help uh, in promoting and bringing it forward. So I'm, I'm very content to think that will be an excellent uh, group to move forward. Okay. Okay. Thank you, convener. Absolutely. I'd like to uh, echo Alexander Stewart's comments there. Um, I think this is a fantastic opportunity for for a cross-party working to encourage uh, women in business and to assist them to grow their businesses um, and uh, wholeheartedly support the CPG. Any further comments? Mr Scott? I would just uh, agree and, and support the formation of this group. I think it's a, a very worthwhile idea. So, uh, uh, on that basis, are we content to approve the cross-party group on women in enterprise? Yes. 
Thank you very much. And if you now consider the proposed CPG on LGBTI plus and um, invent comments from the members. Mr Stewart. I mean, you know, the Parliament's been here for 17 years and I'm just staggered that we don't have a group of this nature on it. Mm. Uh, that, you know, the comments that were made about people being surprised, you know, I'm slightly horrified that we don't have one rather than surprised uh, because, you know, that we, it, it just proves that we weren't getting across all the different individuals and people that required some support and help and advice. Uh, and I think that the group will do that. It will bring together individuals and organisations that do require support uh, because they do feel sometimes very isolated out there. Uh, and I'm, as I say, I'm, I'm staggered that we don't have it, but I'm delighted that we're going to have one, hopefully. Yes, I, I agree. Mm -hmm. I think it's very timely as well. We have made really some, quite some fantastic progress um, in recent years, but it's important, as um, Mr Green said, that we don't rest on our laurels and continue to drive that forward. So I'm fully in support of this group. Yeah. And from my own point of view, I have a, a somewhat of a regret that either of these groups is necessary because if we had full equality in our society, we, uh, neither of them would have a role to play. But I do believe that since we don't live in an ideal society, both can make a very positive contribution going forward. So on that basis, can I ask that um, the CPG on LGBTI plus is agreed? Great. Agreed. Thank you very much. We now move into private session and allow any press and public to leave the gallery. Thank you. <laughs>